Hey guys, how's it going? Today I want to do a lemon cypress indoor care guide to help you keep your cypress looking beautiful throughout the winter months. And these are just such a wonderful, versatile little evergreen. I love to use them in containers and window boxes outside through the growing season, but they're a zone seven through 10 and I live in a zone six, so they don't survive our wintertime temperatures, but they are really adaptable as a house plant. So I wanna talk about six different things today. Uh, we'll talk about light, temperature, repotting, and what type of soil to use, how to water them, fertilize, and prune them. All the time signatures are up on the screen for each one of these sections in case you wanna skip forward and learn about something specific. Before we get into the first section, the reason why they're called a lemon cypress is because uh, one of two things. When you brush your hands on the leaves, which are very soft, or kind of gently crush them or trim them up, they give off a very strong citrusy lemon smell that's really, really nice. And they also have kind of that lemony chartreuse color, especially if you keep them pruned very consistently because that's what the color of the new growth is. And most varieties that you find this time of year, particularly around the holidays, you see these little topiary show up at your garden center. Most of them are a dwarf variety that top out at about three feet, so they're really perfect to keep in containers. So let's start with the first thing, which is light. And this is one of the most important things for these cypress. There's a little bee flying around in here. They need as bright of light as possible, so six to eight hours minimum. And you know, during the winter time when we bring our stuff inside, we're not getting as much light during the day typically. Our days are a lot shorter, the light isn't as intense, so you really want to site them in an area where they get as much sun as you can give them. Um, they will maintain the best color that way. If you don't have them in enough light, the color will start to deepen. It won't be as bright and as happy looking. Um, and they do get a little stringy and they'll kind of start to reach toward the light. You'll be able to definitely tell if you've got it in a spot that doesn't have enough light. Number two is temperature. And this one is a little bit tricky because most evergreens don't wanna be in an inside environment where it's dry and hot which is a lot, of, a lot of times what our homes are like during the winter. And every single guide that I've ever read says to put your cypress in a spot that's 60 degrees. Well, I don't know who keeps their house at 60 degrees. That is way too cold for me. Um, so what I do is I try to put it as close to a window as I can, because it tends to be a little cooler, closer to a window. And I don't put it anywhere near our wood burning fire stove or near an air register where it can kind of sap the moisture in the air around the plant. This year, I've brought all of my lemon cypress to our front sun porch, and I know that this is not the case for everybody. And this is the first time I'm gonna try them up here. This is an unheated room. I've got a little floor heater in here that kicks on if it gets down to like 20 degrees or something like that, just to take the edge off the temperature in here. And last year, I wintered amaryllis and mangaves and my citrus in here beautifully. So I think they're really gonna like it in here because it's gonna get cool enough. Number three is soil type slash repotting. So when we pick these things up at the grocery store, most of the time they're in a small plastic pot. They're usually a little bit on the root bound side, they're in way too small of a pot. So if you can, if it's something you wanna keep, you know, past the holiday season, you might consider repotting it into something slightly larger, maybe into something a little bit more decorative so it looks really pretty and it will keep your plant a lot happier. You don't have to worry about any kind of special mix of soil. I use just a regular organic potting mix and it tends to hold just the right amount of moisture for these plants. So like at the end of the season this year, since I had a bunch of lemon cypress on hand already outside being utilized in a bunch of containers, I just kind of dug them out of the containers and found some terracotta pots. Um, I have a few in glazed pots and I just used the regular potting soil, got them all potted up and they should be happy and good to go for the winter. Number four is watering, which is just about as important as putting these plants in enough light. I have found through the years that these tend to not want to dry out, especially inside in our dry environments. Now, if you live in a very humid environment, it may be a little bit different for you, um, but a lot of guides say to wait till the first two inches of soil have dried before watering. My plant would be crisped up and dead by that point. I find that keeping the soil evenly moist, not too soggy or wet, and not ever dried out keeps these plants really happy which inside means usually twice a week watering. And I just, I don't do a full, like put them in the sink and let the water run out. I just top them up with a little bit of water twice a week. Out here, since they're staying cool enough, I probably will only need to do once a week, but it's just something that depending on where you have it, you've got to go do a finger test in the soil every few days and just gauge where that moisture level is. And I find if I let mine dry out too much, the leaves just, they crisp up in just no time. And it's really hard to rebound them after they've gotten to that point. So I feel like these need a little bit more water than you would think being an evergreen. Number five is fertilizing, which at this point of the year, we're not worried about even bringing them inside. I don't fertilize. Um, they're in fresh potting soil, which does have some nutrients in it. 
Typically, I will fertilize these with whatever I have on hand. You could use holly tone, tree tone, plant tone, even biotone um, on these plants once in the spring, and they'd be super happy with that. And the last thing, number six, is pruning, which should be added to your regular maintenance list. Because if you let this plant age and you don't prune on it often, so you're not encouraging a lot of extra new growth, the color will mellow out. It will either turn kind of more of a aged yellow or more of a green, which, you know, the green is very pretty too, but we do lemon cypress, we get these plants because of that bright pop of chartreuse. So when you prune them, you encourage a ton of new side shoots, a ton of new growth that provide that really beautiful softness and also that really bright color. Um, and they can handle pruning a lot and often. I mean, you could come out here every couple of weeks and just take off just the tips and keep it all nice and, and trimmed. I have a few of mine that are, aren't quite the shape I want them to be. I've got one that I'm training into a topiary. So sometimes I go through stages where they look a little bit sparse in areas. Like I have got a couple that I've purposely faced. Uh, I have a backside that's really flat that I face toward the back uh, because I'm waiting for that to kind of fill in. But they're pretty quick to do that, especially when you're pruning on them often because it encourages so much more new growth. So that's it for my tips, you guys. I mean, it's pretty easy. I think the most important things are putting them in sufficient light and keeping them well watered. Um, and honestly, if you wanna treat them as a holiday plant, you absolutely can. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, I do like to try to carry mine over if at all possible. I've got eight of them here in our sun porch, all of which are uh, two and three years old. I have used them in the barn window box. I had one in our bathroom window box. I had three in our kitchen window box this year, two in containers on our back sun porch. And I constantly, uh, can just use them all over the place and I don't have to rebuy if I just kind of be mindful of some of those things for the winter to help them through. And then I know that I've got eight beautiful little evergreens that I can use in containers like already at my disposal, which is really fun. So anyway, I hope that this was helpful to you guys. Um, I'll definitely be reporting back throughout the winter months uh, to let you know how they're doing up here in the sun porch, how they're liking it. Uh, thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next video. Bye.